So hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Olaf Kozolowski and today we're going to look at the match between Wang Shukin and Benjamin Faraji, a 14 year old Iranian player who at the Asian Championships in 2024 beat the world number one Wang Shukin and in a further match in the tournament came very close to beat Lin Shedong, the player who is at this time the most on fire player in the world. So he had a really impressive run, especially for being unknown from what I heard and don't quote me on this because I didn't do right my research. Faraji is apparently number one in the world in under 15 so of course he's a very promising player but to already have those kind of matches to really explode on the international scene like that is something to behold. I would say that it's the first time that I'm seeing him play. I think it's uh, interesting just to see what happens in this match. So let's go. I think one, one thing that you'll see that is pretty striking is first of all the amount of mistakes that Wang Shikin makes on first balls, on getting uh, like a block back that comes pretty strange. Faraji did however, he, he did anticipate well on the long serves of Wang Shikin, so that serve yeah, was out of the question at some point to still do it. And so Wang Shikin only had to rely on short serves or half long serves. Which then gave the opportunity to Faraji to come in with a back and flick as he does exactly right now. But another thing is that, okay, his footwork of Faraji is quite well developed. Because from my experience at least, is that if you play um, players of a higher level than you, either two things are going to happen. One of two things. It's either you're going to outperform, and uh, in this case that, that applies. But what you also might do is that you're going to freeze up. You're going to freeze up because you're so unsure of the ball, because you're afraid of the ball, like he was a little bit in this point. And you're not going to move as you normally would. And in this here, if you, if you look at how Faraji moves, it's really not the case. Another thing is that I think it's quite common for Iranian players but he serves a lot of long serves and that's something which occurs with some players, uh, Noshad al but also some players from the sub top from Iran, like uh, Amadian, Amin Amadian, a guy who I played before and uh, uh, which I found quite striking when I played him, or Navi Chams, uh, another guy who uh, almost exclusively serves long serves, but because of the quality of the serve, uh, it works. You see, in, in, in this set, this first set with Wang Shukin, Wang Shukin made a lot of e easy mistakes or he was a bit too risky like he is right now. I mean, <laughs> on, uh, on, on the half long or uh, the counter spin after a half long ball from Faraji. So he's trying to avoid that, I think. Trying to keep the game a little bit more over the table or, or keeping the initiative in your own hands. Faraji's serves are becoming less and less and less effective. The long serve, I must say. And you'll see through the course of this match that he's going to uh, decrease, he's going to do them much less. He's going to do them much less and instead he's only, yeah, almost only going to rely on short serves. Yeah, that's... Okay, a lot of pressure from Wang Shukin's side. It's uh, hard to, to stay in your position from there. But... Look how, how often he's out of balance. So let's review this point one more time at 5-3 at here. Faraji sort of tries to overcommit on one shot on the first ball whenever he has a chance to start or open the rally because he really wants the point to be over. And he wants to put a lot of rotation, as much rotation as possible in his first balls. And you see that he isn't really following up his shots. I think in, in the, this set and the next few sets that is a pattern which occurs and which you'll see as the reason as to why he goes back to second or third position a lot. He doesn't really stay close to the table and I think he isn't usually like that. I mean I can only guess but I feel that is because he's really trying to overcommit on those first balls. So one more time let's look at this point. So you see the serve, you see how how abrupt he's trying to, to, to play those shots and how he's yeah, sort of hectic on the, whenever he's touching the ball. See the same thing here. Like he's very sudden movements, very, very strange movements, uh, let's be honest. But he's really going, going back too much. He's, yeah, very little, yeah, very few rallies where he really stays close to the table. 
But then again, he wants to take the initiative as much as he can. On, on his receive, he, he really uses the banana flick a lot. He wants to open the rally if he can, like here. He wanted to step around. Um, so he really wants to take the initiative as he, if he can. But if Wang Shukin starts himself, you see that he has a lot of trouble. Here again, one more time. So besides some, some few, uh, quite a few easy mistakes from Wang Shukin's side, uh, mistakes that are quite unforced, let's say, uh, unforced errors. There's not really anything that is pointing to Faraji being a real threat at the moment to Wang Shukin. Okay, he, he played sort of a rusty first set with a lot of mistakes on the first ball, a lot of mistakes on trying to control Faraji's first ball. But apart from that, you don't see many weapons, apart from uh, Wang Shukin maybe not, not being able to control uh, Faraji served too well. You don't see too many weapons that Faraji can exploit to win this match. And uh, that is the reason why uh, until now, yeah, Wang Shukin is taking the lead. Yeah, rightfully so. Also a lot of banana flicks that go to Wang Shukin's forehand. Quite gutsy, I have to say. But maybe that's why. Because he doesn't want to uh, be put under pressure by Wang Shikin's backhand, but good passive save in that rally. <sighs> nice ball. And again, a good surf. See, that's also a thing I like about players like him, the constant variation in surf. Or the constant variation receive even. He's not just sticking to one sort of strategy, he's always trying to change things up and it looks like Wang Shukin's losing a lot of easy mistakes or making a lot of easy mistakes. I can't speak for him but it, it can also be because Faraji is just constantly varying and variation is a big factor into people not catching a rhythm in the match, especially if it's new players, unknown players. If you're constantly changing things up, I think, which is the thing that players like Morigard or Alexis Lebrun uh, or, or guys like that do very well, or Anders Lind, I don't know, then it's hard for your opponent to catch a rhythm. So, good serve, nice place of the first ball, and yeah, 11-9. So like I said, Faraji is really going back a bit too much, being a bit too hasty on the first ball. See, one more time, immediately after receive, he uh, just decides to take a few steps back. And that long serve is working less and less, so he's uh, stepping off of it, so to say. Like I said, he, he sort of tries to overcommit on his first balls at the moment, which forces him to make some mistakes. Here, quite a good serve, but then couldn't do enough with it once, once it stayed over the table. Yeah. Good fight, good fight. But but you see what I mean with when I try to say that there aren't too many weapons that, that, that you can really point to and say, this is what, what causes Wang Shukin to really be in danger. The serve, of course, are, uh, is quite good. The receive can be better. A lot of times it's quite a passive receive. And in the game, he goes back a lot. He doesn't really dominate the rallies or he doesn't really dictate the pace of the game. It's strange that Wang Shukin still managed to give this match out of hands. <laughs> Sorry, it's a literal tra translation of Dutch. This is not uh, the way it goes. So good, shouldn't have gone to the back end. It was a good serve and a good follow up. And again, a good serve. So you see, he really wants to go for the point with that banana flick. And, and when it isn't the case, it's, it's hard for him to win the points. Then here again, a first ball that is missed by Wang Shukin. Nice change of placement. And, but you see how, how uncomfortable Wang Shukin is with the surf. It's always the tiny variations which causes him to, to be in trouble. But the same thing applies from, from Wang Shikin's side to Faraji. Nice surf. Nice surf, but again, once it stayed over the table, I think his game isn't too developed there. If you look at his short forehand, whenever he had to receive with short forehand or push with short forehand, 
balls aren't too good. Okay, nice. Good place to the middle by Wang Shukin, but uh, you see, Ula. Good fight by Faraji. And you see how he also trusts, has a lot of faith in his first ball foreign. So he tries to step around as much as he can. Here again, one more time. He feels that Wang Shukin is un uncomfortable with, I don't know, the rotation of it, I guess. Good fight, lucky ball. Nice receive, one more time. And so he's really going for those banana flicks to the far end. Downspin. Okay. Good change of serve, but unfortunately, uh, Wang Shukin still anticipated, still adapted, yeah. But you see, those are, those are first balls. Those are shots that usually he really doesn't miss. Here, one more time. It's not like... Uh, that long push or the long push before was of, uh, of gr such great quality. It wasn't of good quality in my opinion, but yeah. Mm. <sighs> wow. I see he really is quite fast. Uh, to cover all those shots was backhand. And I think it's it's good for him that he just pushing long at the moment whenever the serve is short. So he's waiting for them to be half long. I don't think that's the best strategy in general because normally you should always keep the racket high before you think that a ball is coming half long. But he does it the opposite way at the moment. At the moment also, Wang Shikin's uh, first balls or third balls aren't of such a big threat because he misses so many of them. So it's not that big a deal if he just pushes long whenever he wants to in the middle or to the middle back end. Lucky shot once more. Yeah. Those long pushes, they can, they work, but the moment Wang Shikin puts them on table, Faraji immediately goes behind, goes back, goes two, three meters behind the table. Uh, here again, like three points in a row, he just immediately took two, three steps back, which is a bad thing. So, in my Ola, good, good ball, good ball. In my honest opinion, and I don't want to discredit Faraji in any means, he sort of got away with it, with the fact that Wang Shikin lost or missed so many first balls, missed so many openings with his uh, forehand or with his backhand. Then again, you could argue that because of his variation, because of his fight spirit also, that it caused Wang Shikin to be uncomfortable with whenever he got a long push to his middle or to his backhand. So you could look at it from both sides, but then again, I think we can all agree that it's quite unlikely for Wang Shikin to miss that many first balls in a match. So now, 9-9, nine, nine, money time. And I think a good option, nice follow-up. But not the best decision of Wang Shikin to just go to the back end. I, sh I think he should have kept going to the forehand. And that is quite a risky shot. I mean, that is, uh, I think, a bit too gutsy for the moment. Very, very... Incredible victory, good for him, I suppose. But I just want to point out one more thing and that I want to uh, draw with the tablet because it's been quite a while since we uh, used the tablet to point something out. That is from the match against Lin Shidong. He also played a match against Lin Shidong where Lin Shidong had much more trouble with Faraji's long serves, those hook long serves to um, Lin Shidong's backhand. And I sort of want to draw out what happens and what doesn't happen whenever he does those. We're back and we're just going to see one example that I want to point out, that I want to point out from the match between Lin Shidong and Faraji in the singles tournament of the Asian Championships, in which especially at uh, the end of the fifth set, it's very striking that Faraji is just constantly serving long to backhand with a hook serve, varying between backspin or with topspin or more side spin. And I just want to show you the opportunities he gets from that serve and the options that are excluded for Lin Shidong to play which made them so effective. Okay, so let's first of all look at a few of the points just to get an example, just to get a clear view of what we're talking about here. Let's just look at this point right here. Okay, so long serve with topspin to the back end of Lin Shidong. So let's just say that BF Benjamin Faraji is on this side and uh, Lin Shidong. So, he serves from here to 
Lin Shidong's backhand. It would be best if I could serve it a bit sharper because I think that's the main goal here. Um, this, that is a, a, a part of the goal here is that it comes a little bit to the side of the body. Of course the rotation turns this way. Okay, so should the ball continue to roll over the table or over the floor, it should go back there, okay, because of the side spin. The problem is, because of that side spin, it is quite risky for Lin Chidong to play that ball down the line. Because of the side spin, either the ball could go a little bit, drift a bit to the side, you could overcompensate and you could play a bit more to the middle, but that is easy to cover and that is, to be honest, that's quite in the racket. For those reasons, it is much safer, especially in a stressful situation, to just go, bam, diagonal. To just go diagonal. Of course, Faraji knows this. Faraji knows this. And as I said in the match against Wang Shikin, he apparently is a player who likes to step around on the first ball, who likes to use his forehand instead of his backhand to open the rally. So he knows this and he anticipates on this by stepping around prematurely and trying to take his forehand here should the ball come there. He doesn't take this with a backhand, but instead he wants to take it with a forehand. And even if the rally opens up, and if Lin Shidong uh, doesn't push that ball back, the serve back from Faraji, he can still use a forehand to counterspin and go wherever he likes, okay? So that makes it very tough for Lin Shidong to adapt on that serve. Because again, like I said, let's say that a certain part of the table isn't important for, for Faraji to cover. Let's say it's about this part of the table. Sounds reasonable to me. So Faraji only has to worry from this part all the way diagonal. I'm sorry, I'm trying to uh, keep it sort of structured and organized, but it's looking a bit like a mess. But all I'm saying is that he only has to pay attention to that part of the table. And that is quite easy to cover with forehand alone, especially because it looks like quite a fast player. So that's why that serve is quite effective, even if it's a long serve and your opponent knows that it's a long serve. And you could ask yourself, yeah, why doesn't Lin Shidong step around and use a forehand here then? If it's really a heavy, heavy, heavy side spin serve, it's also quite difficult because the rotation sort of goes against your hand and you can't do all that much with that ball either. So that's why, at least that's my explanation of it. So you see that again he's going to do that surf and you see how he's stepping around and it's tough it's tough to really play that ball down the line and he tried it a few times be it with his backhand or with his forehand and he missed almost every time okay so again another random match example of course of a point that i know that he won but here a long surf one more time Lin Shidong tried to step around again again he missed it is a tough surf to really put on the table and that's what I mean why it, it can be so effective. Speaking a little, a tiny, tiny bit from experience, like I said, some Iranian players are quite known from it, uh, for it. I played against a few of those and it's not easy at all to bring those back, especially at the higher levels. I mean, you can't just deposit the ball back on table. Because then you get destroyed. So that was my match review, my sort of match analysis on Faraji's match against Wang Shukin and a little bit of a bonus against Lin Shidong. Hope you got something from it, hope you learned something from it. Please let me know in the comments down below what you think that Faraji's ceiling is because he really just burst onto the international scene. I think it's fair to say that unless you're a sort of a table tennis fanatic and you really follow the youth circuit as well, you haven't really heard of him. I haven't either. So let me know what you think that he'll become and uh, how soon maybe even because he's only 14 years old and if you look at these matches sometimes uh, it makes you think that the sky is the limit but we'll just have to see so one more time thank you for watching hope you got something from it and until a next video